Well, hey there team, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my review of Valkyria Chronicles. So this was a little bit of a side project that I'm now going to make probably a weekly slot or so for on the channel where I've been going back to games from 2014. It's a little bit nostalgia, but also a little, little bit of an experiment to see how older games hold up. You know, I think a lot of people, I'm not the only one, have a lot of nostalgia for the way games were and are a little bit jaded with the current state of affairs. Anyway, not to waffle too much, but I reviewed Alien Isolation. I loved it. I'm going to review Valkyria Chronicles. I very much enjoyed my time with that too. And next week I will do probably Dragon Age Inquisition. And I'll work out a system where I kind of let you know in the review what will be coming up in the next week. I picked that because it's kind of on deep sale at the moment as well. So if you find this interesting, maybe you don't exactly have a lot of throw around money, but you want to get involved with community and play good games, you can join the Discord, you could play along and come along and discuss if you like. I'll be doing it anyway regardless because I am becoming kind of quite invested in this trip down memory lane. I have put a couple of hours into Dragon Age Inquisition just before I leave it. I'll talk about it at the end of this review, sort of a, a squeeze of an overview first impressions into that there. But the bulk of this is Valkyria Chronicles. So credentials, backstory, whatever. I played this originally on the PS3 when it came out in 2008. The reason we're playing this is the PC port that this version is, the Steam version, which I got dirt cheap uh, on sale last week, uh, came out in 2014. So that's 10 years ago. I have a lot of nostalgia for this game. I really, really do enjoy it. Does it hold up? Oh, now that's an interesting question. While I gushed openly over Alien Isolation, some of Valkyria Chronicles kind of wore me out, to be perfectly honest. Now, you know, sacrilege, surely. I can't say these things. But I promise to be honest and even-handed. I, I won't deny I enjoyed my time with it. I put about 10 hours in it. I only have that week or so to get through. And there's clearly way more hours there as well. If you can handle the mission design and the grind, which maybe I'll chip away at it in the background over the year. But I'm kind of happy to put the controller down and call my time with it done. Again, you'll notice my worth your time, worth your money value judgment. A little bit different here. It's harder to do with a game that's 10 years old because the prices drop and it can be quite difficult to figure out what it originally retailed for anyway. But I suppose by current standards anyway, worth your time, worth your money. Yeah, absolutely. It's worth every cent. 100 foot view. What is this game? It is anime band of brothers. That might sound like a bit of a cop out, but that kind of handily covers what's going on. You have this fictitious stand in for World War II. You have like an empire invading a federation. There's a lot of the tropes of the period that you would expect, but it's got its own little twist too as well. It deals with some social issues which are kind of, I don't want to say heavy handed because they're not necessarily dealt with poorly, but they're there. You come from, I believe it's Galia. You're sort of like a Switzerland stand in. You're like a neutral party that stays out of the alliances between the two. And you just happen to be sitting on a big bloody bucket of, well, what, what do they call it? The power crystal, the, the, the MacGuffinism, <laughs> this magic crystal that fuels everything, powers everything. It's used as ammo, whatever, right? It's a MacGuffin. It doesn't matter. Uh, so the Empire's invaded the Federation and in its kind of greed and fervor, it's decided to invade your little nation as well. And that's how you get swept up in it. You kind of follow the protagonist. You could say Welkin. He's kind of a uh, God, I was going to say ditzy, but yeah, he's almost a male inverse ditz, but, but less of a grid girl and more of a school guy that's socially unaware. So he's come home to town because the war's going on, checking in on his family. He, he's a uni student that studies like biology and all this sort of thing. And and he's totally socially unaware and aloof and, and it constantly gets him in trouble. But it also is the source of how he gets out of a lot of his monster of the week. How are we going to beat these enemies? Well, you know, I learned things from studying fish. <laughs> so we're going to modify the tank so it can go in the water, right? It might sound a bit dumb. It is a bit dumb, I guess, but it's involved. Like in the moment, you see, you're sucked in, you're enjoying it. It's kind of good TV when, it, when it's going. So you get your little band of brothers together. You basically have a tank uh, that's sort of retrofitted from World War One, and you're very quickly press-ganged. Well, that's not the best way to put it. They seem to have like a, a national 
to the military uh, service pretty much of all youths, right? It, it seems to be, now that I think of it, I know a lot of Euro countries have those sort of policies. It's pretty cool, compulsory service and that. But anyway, let's not let's not inject personal stuff too much, Scarlet. But yeah, very quickly, you're part of the people's militia. You're chucked into an officer position, being that you're from academia of the period. And, you've, you know, you've got some mates, they're running platoons as well, and there's growing pains, your sister's involved in it. And so, yeah, Welkin and his merry band of brothers, you've got some, you know, people already in his militia group that are giving him a hard time because, you know, one of them's a salty vet from World War One, and they're all chummy, and they're like, who's this upstart? So, you know, it's all kind of standard fare that you would expect from a good storytelling uh, experience, right? He is essentially an upstart junior officer, uh, and instead of brushing over it, they, they sort of flesh it out through this storybook way of telling the story. His little sister is a stand-in for, like, Jews at the time, uh, called Darksons in this. they got dark hair, and some sort of catastrophic calamity happened in the world where everyone died, and they blame it on them. And so, like, that's explored as well. I guess you could say it's fairly heavy-handed, but it's never really poorly handled. Like, the game is not here trying to browbeat you and do, you know, the standard brain damaged 2024 way of telling stories of nuance which is racism bad end of conversation it's sort of like well okay well, why does this chick hate the dark haired girl so much and it explores you know she's got some stuff that's happened in her past and you know they they sort of grow and overcome it and you know dare i say storytelling 101 again it's not academy award material but maybe if it did come out in current year it would be which is kind of tragic. And yeah, like so some there are some standout storytelling components, like uh, you get sort of dislocated from your squad in a forest and you come across an enemy soldier who's, you know, he's fatal and he's begging for his mum and, and, you know, your two main characters nurse him. You get discovered by the enemy, but they realise that you treated him with fair quarter and, you know, the enemy officer kind of... There's a battlefield honour which, honestly, I, I, I quite like it. It might be a bit cheesy, it might be a bit corny, but but call it the old military dog in me, right? I guess I just have a little bit of a heartstring soft spot for that sort of gentlemanly valour on the battlefield. And, you know, it's handled very well. The, the game sort of touts itself as a turn-based tactical type game, but it's really not. It's doing some sort of gimmicky stuff, like you, you drive your characters around in third person and they have like a movement meter, and the more you kind of fuck around in that mode, the more you get shot passively at enemies, and that cuts the other way as well. So like making a firing line of, you have different classes, right? And shock troopers are sort of your, your short range machine gun dudes. They're supposed to be the brunt of your force. But I found that taking the scout riflemen, they've essentially got like, you know, just just semi-auto rifles. They're, they're actually long range, but not that impact. But I just make a wall of them that's like a porcupine. So if the enemy tries to come up on you, they all just passively pew, 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 drill the dudes. So one could almost argue that's exploitative, but the game taught me to behave this way and that I get rewarded for it. But, you know, the, the, it's a cool gimmick at first, but you come to realize that it, it was kind of just that. It's like someone stuck it on the whiteboard and it stayed there and no one really maybe asked, maybe, maybe we should balance our game. Maybe we should change some of the mechanics. So, yeah, the novelty lasts and it's carried by the beautiful art. The soundtrack is so good and the story... So like the gameplay is not terrible, but you it really starts falling apart when you come to realize that this game actually isn't a tactics game. Even though you've got a barracks full of dudes and you can choose who you want in your squad and all that, like you get this illusion of choice. And I really don't think it's malicious. I just think they did a terrible job uh, designing parts of this. Specifically, each new mission has critical path design, which is kind of a big no-no in uh, what you would probably think would be a sandbox battle turn-based thing where you're, you're let off the leash to solve the mission under your own terms. When I say critical path design, so this is a term that I use to describe, um, it's kind of almost like riddle theory because I hate riddles as well. Like I like a puzzle game, I like maths, you know, put the square block in the square hole. You know, th there's no clever dickhead writer or game designer behind that you know you can you can solve that two plus two equals four this is all stuff that is graspable you just turn that up to 11 that's fine so what's going on here is there are hidden mechanics or paths through a level and they will all have their own flavor of the week like the forest one you got to sneak through but 
it's very clear there is this path, the critical path that the designer had in mind when they made the game and you kind of have to do it that way. And the only way to figure out how to do it that way is to kind of waste 30 minutes of your time playing the level, trying to solve it, failing because you did it the wrong way and then having to restart or reload or whatever because you know, you're probably already 30 minutes deep into wrong moves. And it got to a point where even though I'm compelled by the story and I kind of love the game, I'd be booting up a new mission and I'd let out a sigh. And I was like, maybe I just need to put it down. 10 hours is enough. Where it's like, I'm going to have to figure out what the bullshit hidden puzzle is in this level. And I'm going to have to do it. Uh, and I'm not going to get it right the first time. Anyway, I don't, I don't need to talk circularly. There's all sorts of examples trying to chase down armored vehicles, ducking through side alleys. And you've got to but you have to run up behind it with the right dude. But if you didn't bring those dudes on your deployment, you're not going to kind of realize that until 30 minutes into the mission. And it just keeps doing this over and over and over again. And maybe later, another 10, 20 hours in, the game will really let me off the leash and let me do what I want to do. But again, the, the design philosophy of just play the game for 5, 10 hours, it gets good, bro, is unacceptable. And it always was. And people were gaslit into thinking that's the way. So look, I think it's a great game. I think it's worth the time and worth your money. And I would really love to play more of it, but it's one of those things, maybe I have to just do an hour here or there over the next six months to, to see it through because these, these puzzles and this critical path design philosophy where you know you have a game dev that probably thinks they're more clever than they are and their obfuscated party trick per level very quickly wore me down and I wouldn't be surprised if I'm not the only one. So maybe this is a hot take, I don't know. It's a game 10 years removed. I haven't really looked into what other people think. But again, don't dis even, even though this is a big problem with the game, it's still worth your time. So don't let it discourage you. Put it on your wish list if, at least if you missed buying it. Again, I'm going to try and work out a system where I talk about what game I'm reviewing this week and I'm going to try and aim for things on sale so you can play along with me. If you only really have five bucks a week to spend, I'm going to try and find a way to get you involved in gaming from uh, from a great era. Anyway, so Valkyria Chronicles, that's my review. Cool. Uh, two and three were PSP's versions. I never played them and I, I never heard whether they're actually any good, but I know Valkyria Chronicles 4 came out a few years later and I played that and I remember enjoying that as well. So surely stick with me for a couple of years <laughs> and I guess we'll play Valkyria 4. So now I'll just, I'll take a little bit of time on the tail end to talk about Dragon Age Inquisition. This is the game that I will be ruining. We'll call it tentatively this week. I'm going to try and do a week at a time and I don't want to put too much on my plate, but I like the idea of doing 50 reviews in a year, that sort of thing, as well as new games. So maybe we can up the pace if we get into a rhythm and I can do one every six days or something. But for now, Dragon Age Inquisition on deep sale on Steam, probably about five bucks, 750, something like that. I've played a couple of hours and I'm, I'm actually really, really loving a lot of it. Uh, I did play this back in the day. I played it on console in 2014. Um, I clocked it and I really got sucked into it. Like, and the funny thing is I don't remember any of this fucking story. I, I can't remember any of it, but I remember loving it. And um, like you kind of uniquely in just enjoying the main, you know, you're the bloody chosen one, big finale going into another realm or something. I can't quite remember, but it's, it's such a strong start. And it really does feel like a successor to the Mass Effect series, which is kind of what it was. It is the third in the Dragon Age series, I believe. I played the first one, Dragon Age Origins, which is probably super old. Maybe we'll go back to that at some point. And I really enjoyed that as well, if memory serves. I never played the second one, which is a bit tragic because I believe, no spoilers, but this is me trying to recall from 10 years ago. I believe the main protagonist from the second game rocks up in this one and kind of you team up with him. I don't think he explicitly gets in your party, but you sort of, you, you all join the same Inquisition team anyway. Yeah, so look, it's a it's a really fun game. I'm playing it with um, mouse and keyboard, which is something that's always been a thing with the Dragon Age games that I never did. I, I, I was a console player pretty much until 2014. 2014 was my big pivot. And I played this on my PS4, I guess, at the time. So you can play like in a tactical overhead map mode on PC. And I haven't really gotten a lot of value out of it 
yet. And that's one of the things that's sort of, it's a bit clunky. Like, do you want to play in this tactical, top-down, almost Baldur's Gate 3 mode? Or do you want to drive your character from behind? And even then, it does some weird stuff, like you have to hold down attack because it's sort of like a time cycle, but you don't you don't alt tab fire or anything like that, like World of Warcraft, and yet it behaves that way. But it feels good. That's the wildest thing. I'm I'm playing like a two-handed dwarf, and uh, and just like the, there's a counter system, which is really cool. Like you set the counter and kind of trap the enemy into hitting you, and the story is really interesting. So far, um, I, I dislike a lot of the characters because you can already see 2014 writing starting to turn into 2024 writing. You know, they all want to just emote out loud about their feelings and poor me and all this sort of shit. The one person I do like, funnily enough, is the elf guy. He seems pretty straight to the point and fairly affable. And he's kind of unlike normal elves because I fucking hate elves. And uh, funnily enough, the dwarf sidekick to him seems like a bit of a bloody cuck. So they're in a role reversal kind of state. It's early days. We'll see how we go. But uh, but me and the bald elf, we're best mates by the look of it. Um, anyway, it's really cool. It's really fun. Medieval Mass Effect, if you've never played it before or anything like that. Do you need to have played the first two games? Not at all. There's... A lot of world building, there's a lot of really cool stuff, especially, well, like I said, I played the first game, I never played the second one. So there's all that lore there, but this game really does stand on its own, and it follows a different story. This Inquisition on the back of the Chantry with all the Templars and all this sort of stuff, which wasn't really the core, the Grey Wardens, I believe, was the original game. So the, the faction you were with and sort of trying to save the world with in the original a more peripheral here. Anyway, this is only supposed to be a brief little thing on the end of the video, if you made it this far. Pick it up, play along with me, look forward to the review in the coming week or so. Who knows, this might not work, but I think this could be a fun thing in community. Anyway, they're my thoughts on these games. Team, might just leave it there for the time being, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.